Hello, Fullertonians. Today we have an interview with Cecilia Ariasa, the director of Fullerton College's transfer department. So welcome, Cecilia. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm so, really excited to be here. Yeah, we're really excited to have you as Fulton College alumni and current students. So let's first get started with the introduction of you. Sure. I'm so Cecilia Ariasa. I'm the director of our transfer center. And I've been at Fullerton College now for 10 years. This uh, July will be my 10 year <laughs> anniversary. And I've been involved with um, supporting students in their transfer mm -hmm. process for now over you know, 16 years. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, yeah, that is fantastic. And, and from uh, my own time at Fullerton College, I can just speak to how great work you do at the transfer center and how Thank amazing you. You know, it is to get help from them. Um, when you are trying to transfer. So let's talk about, you know, uh, like, I, I do want to get to advice later, but first I want to talk about, like, enrollment, transfer trends, and how the pandemic has really affected everything and, you know, what the next steps for Fulton College are. So let me first get started with the question that I think everyone is dreading because we don't really have an answer to it. But, you know, you see campuses, Cal State's private universities in California, they've all moved to in-person instruction over the mm -hmm. you know, last full year. Um, Fulton College has not. So when do you think we will have that in-person instruction and services back or if we will ever? Um, what's the path? Yeah, that's a question I think that a lot of people have. Um, what does what does it look like for us moving forward? Mm -hmm. um, I think that we learned a lot from the pandemic. Mm -hmm. We learned that we have to be able to provide multiple methods of delivering instruction and services mm -hmm. to students. So I don't think that we'll ever go back to the way things were, per se, mm -hmm. uh, where it's just fully, completely, and only in-person services, but rather we're trying to find that balance of offering online instruction and in-person mm -hmm. instruction uh, and support services to students because students have indicated that, you know, they like the convenience of having some of these support services virtually or mm -hmm. hybrid options as well. So we're in the process of trying to find that balance, you know, what's the good balance of in-person versus online classes, um, and hopefully be able to meet the needs of our students moving forward. Mm -hmm. Thank you for explaining that. So I think we can see from the pandemic that there's a real need for hybrid services, and some students thrive better in different, you know, circumstances. Absolutely. We did um, do surveys with students, and we found that, you know, well, for some of them, it was a challenge to do mm -hmm. online learning. Uh, for others, it fit better with their schedules. If they were mm -hmm. busy with working and going to school, maybe they were able to take more classes. Mm -hmm. um, or it was just more convenient, especially if they were normally having a longer commute. Um, so we definitely want to find that balance and, and provide um, both virtual and mm -hmm. in-person services. Yeah, and that's certainly, you know, Fulton College is, has always been about student needs and student voices. So if you can fit that better than whatever is needed to be done, I think the staff just kind of does that. Absolutely. Yeah. So what kind of trends have you seen in terms of enrollment um, in the past two years in Fulton College? Like, has there been a difference pre-pandemic and mid-pandemic, I guess? Definitely. There's been significant enrollment decline, mm -hmm. and not just at Fullerton College, but mm -hmm. I think across the state. Mm -hmm. um, for us, it's been about a 17% decline, so it's okay. significant. Um, however, prior to the pandemic, we were already on a declining trend. Mm -hmm. um, and again, this was just across community colleges. There were just fewer uh, students graduating from high school, mm -hmm. which affects our, our enrollment and our student population. Right. So we were already on a downward enrollment trend mm -hmm. prior to the pandemic, and it just exacerbated it. Right. Um, so... We, um, we did experience enrollment decline, but it's also allowing us to do some more things, some more innovative things since we have you know less students on campus, mm -hmm. less students, maybe we could do a little bit more of uh, case management with students, mm -hmm. more follow-up services with students, intentional inreach to them, right. because we have this more services and, and staff available to support the students. Mm -hmm. And um, we've also seen a lot of success uh, despite, you know, some of the challenges that we've had for our students. Mm -hmm. We just had, you know, one of the largest graduating classes, one of the largest commencements uh, mm -hmm. not too long ago, a couple weeks ago. Right. Um, so our students are thriving. Um, they are getting through. They're being resilient. 
and uh, achieving success in many cases despite the challenges. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. I'm, I'm glad to hear that despite the low enrollment, people are still thriving at Fulton College. So, so how have these enroll like low enrollment trends translated to transfer rates? Mm -hmm. So transfer rates are very uh, difficult to calculate because mm -hmm. there's uh, many different factors that go into um, you know the numbers that we get reported at the end of the year of how many students actually enrolled at a university mm -hmm. uh, who started out at Fullerton College. But given that our student population was in decline already um, and uh, with the pandemic, we did see a little bit of a decline mm -hmm. in applications. Um, however, again, it's a number of factors. Mm -hmm. um, when I've uh, surveyed our students about if or how the pandemic has impacted their transfer, uh, many of them indicate that, you know, many of them did hold off on going to a university mm -hmm. um, because they weren't sure if they were going to be able to do university work online. Right. Some of them indicated they weren't able to get the class they wanted in the modality that they preferred, and so right. that maybe delayed their transfer um, a little bit. And then others said, this was great, I was able to take more classes right. online. Um, so again, it just affected students differently. Right. Um, but definitely there was an impact there. Yeah. And um, like I mentioned, it transfers also a function of what's happening at the universities. So if our universities get impacted and have many more applications mm -hmm. um, than they can accept, then that's gonna affect our transfer rates as well. Right. And in pre previous years, in the most recent uh, year that we have data for, mm -hmm. um, with mo the majority of our students applying to Cal State Fullerton, yeah. Uh, we did see a decline uh, in students' uh, acceptances there. The, the admit rate went down mm -hmm. there. Um, their, their GPA requirements increased uh, because they had more students apply, and so right. that affects, again, how many students um, are able to transfer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's like a mix back, you know, every mm -hmm. student's circumstances um, is affecting it differently. So, you know, it, the pandemic, and, and you mentioned this already, that some students really struggled with being remote while others enjoyed the convenience of it. How do transfer students connect to each other? How do they build community in a remote environment? That was one of the biggest challenges. Mm -hmm. um, we tried to do some community building activities over Zoom when mm -hmm. we first you know, transitioned to the online learning environment, and we had some mixed success, mm -hmm. but um, it was difficult for students to engage. I think, you know, after taking classes, a full day of classes on Zoom, students yeah. don't necessarily want to engage in, you know, uh, other activities uh, on Zoom. It's, it's the Zoom fatigue, right, that everybody right. was experiencing. Um, however, we tried to stay active and get students connected through our social media. Right. So when we transitioned um, to the remote environment, we weren't able to do our typical transfer celebration that we like to do, mm -hmm. but we still wanted to honor and celebrate our students, and so we turned to ramping up our Insta uh, Instagram campaigns, right. look who's transferring, yeah. um, and other ways to kind of get students connected and, mm -hmm. and celebrate their achievements um, on social media and through our Canvas cohorts. Um, newsletters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the newsletters were great when I was still, uh, you know, a student. And I remember, I, I'm not sure if I'm remembering this correctly, but in the drive throughs that they would do, was the transfer center part of those two? We did do a, a transfer uh, metal uh, drive through pickup mm -hmm. um, that first year. So we did that, um, yeah. again, just trying to be innovative and find ways to still celebrate our students. Right. And, you know, I, I remember the staff was working so hard on the drive throughs and the Instagram campaigns were fantastic, too. You know, it's coming from some, you know, we're the Instagram generation. Yes. So it's so yes. meet students where they are, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about transferring specifically now. What are some of the most common problems, pandemic or otherwise, that community college students run into when they transfer to other institutions? Um, so there's many challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one of the biggest things is not knowing how the process works. Right. Um, it's not 
intuitive, right, necessarily. Sometimes it's more complicated than students realize. Mm -hmm. Students may think, well, you know, I'm a smart student. I should be able to figure this out on my own. Um, but um, there's a lot that they may not know about the process. Sometimes the communications from the universities are not straightforward and can be a little confusing. There's a lot of deadlines to meet that students may not realize that it's not just submitting the application and then I'm gonna forget about it. Yeah. Um, and a lot of, like I said, communications from the universities not checking their emails or reading emails thoroughly can really get students tripped up uh, right. in the process. Um, the application itself is sometimes not intuitive, depending mm -hmm. on where you're applying to. And that's where our center tries to have an impact. Yeah. We try to be there every step of the way for the application process because it is so critical um, that students don't fall through the cracks um, along the way there. Um, but uh, some students never utilize our services. And uh, yeah. unfortunately, sometimes I see those students at the end when they've been denied or you know had an application admission rescinded even yeah and you know we could have saved some of that heartache if they would have you know connected with us um, another problem that students run into is that they don't realize how competitive mm -hmm. or impacted our local campuses can be so there's this you know misconception that as long as you know I come to Fullerton College and yeah. Um, pass my classes, maybe get an associate's degree, I know I'm going to be able to transfer. Our most popular destination is Cal State Fullerton. Mm -hmm. um, but there's no, that's not a guarantee necessarily. Students still need to have good grades and those GPAs fluctuate every year. So right. students need to be put, put themselves in the best position academically to have mm -hmm. the most options. And then transfer requirements do change. Right. So, um, a lot of times that's a that's a problem for students who maybe only come to see a counselor in the beginning of their academic journey with us, you know, maybe at orientation when they first right. start out and they're excited and then they go off on their own and choose their classes on their own mm -hmm. and now their educational plan is outdated, you know, yeah. and it's like two years later and they're getting ready to apply and the requirements have changed. Right. So it's really important for students to stay connected with counselors and transfer services and right. all the other support services that we have available. Right, it needs impeccable organization because every school is different and every department within every school is different. Just get yes. obsessed with assist.org, yes. checking it over and over and over yes. again. Yes. Um, but, but I think it's so fantastic that we have all of these resources on campus and, and not just the transfer center. We'll get some, in some, into some of that later, but you know, as you said, to get your academics up there, to get your extracurriculars mm -hmm. up there, we just have so much on campus and online now mm -hmm. to be able to do that. Um, and we'll get into that in a bit later. But uh, we've talked about the negatives now, but I really want to talk about what are the benefits of going to a community college first and then transferring out to a four-year? Sure. So I think one of the biggest benefits is, is the cost savings, right? Um, especially now that we have the promise with mm -hmm. two years free for any first-time college student. Students get to complete half of their bachelor's degree, right, free of cost. Exactly. Um, tuition free. So that frees them up to either, you know, save up for the university or if they do end up having to take student loans to complete their bachelor's degree, it's not as much right. loan or debt that they'll be um, finishing their degree with. Right. Um, so I think that's a huge savings uh, for students. Mm -hmm. um, and they're getting a quality education. It's not Absolutely. like they're getting any less of an education. Yeah. Um, another opportunity is that students get to explore many different fields while they're here at the community college and maybe explore you know, their majors if they're not quite sure. Um, to really figure out what it is they want to do. And um, the other advantage that comes to mind is that community colleges, especially in California, they're some of the mo most diverse institutions mm -hmm. in higher ed. So this is a unique opportunity for students to be in the same class with students who are coming from different you know, backgrounds, all ages, experiences, right. and identities. And what an opportunity that is to learn from each other there it's pretty unique right um, for students here 
And I think definitely the diversity uh, aspect of it is so educational mm-hmm. because at four institutes, you might not have, even if you have diversity in race, the diversity in age aspect is always kind of missing. Mm-hmm. Whereas at Fulton College, you know, I've studied alongside with people who have grandkids and people mm-hmm. who have kids and high school students too, because they're dual enrollment. Right. So it's all ages and, and all careers, you know, because even uh, I remember one time we had a real estate agent who was studying with us because they were just trying to get more certifications. So mm-hmm. it's, you know, professionals too. Right. So I think that is just so fantastic about going to community college, mm-hmm. apart from the you save a lot of money aspect. Right. So let's get to some of the advice part. You know, um, a lot of high school high schoolers have just graduated or are looking towards their next options, juniors probably. So let's talk about high schoolers first. What advice would you have for them if they're considering but kind of on the fence about community college and then potentially transferring out? Sure. I would. Um, the advice I would share is... Um, you know, really explore all your options Mm -hmm. and think about the community college because you can really transfer anywhere Mm -hmm. from here. This is an opportunity to maybe even reinvent yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, If in high school maybe um, they didn't take advantage of many um, opportunities or weren't the student for whatever reason that they knew they could be, Mm -hmm. here's an opportunity to start fresh. Exactly. Right? Uh, and for those students even who did do well and, you know, did excel, um, this is an opportunity, again, to explore your options and really think about what you want to do um, and prepare yourself and chart a path for yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have students that transfer everywhere right. from Fullerton College, um, some of the most highly competitive campuses as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so they are, students can come here and excel and apply to those competitive universities and not only do our students get accepted to you know cal states ucs usc stanford Mm -hmm. and this year even we had a student get accepted to yale right um our students thrive once they transfer yeah so um really for high school students is to really think about us as an option Mm -hmm. and if you are thinking about coming to a community college prepare yourself from day one and start right. thinking about how do I get to my transfer goal mm-hmm. um, and don't make the mistake of just you know saying well I'm not going to transfer yet I'm not going to think about that yet right. um, take advantage of our services early on right and you know a funny thing that I remembered when you said that is at, uh, at UCLA a professor who has taught in Ivy Leagues and UCLA for long time now I don't remember how many years but he told me when I went to his office hours that you know community college transfers actually do way better in their program than other students Um, why do you think that is our students are ready from day one when they transfer Mm -hmm. they have um, you know persevered here and they maybe many of our students work and go to school Mm -hmm. so they've learned their time management skills They've had to do that, you know, and they've gotten involved and they've done a lot of their, you know, preparation already, their coursework here. They've they've had to think about what that next step is and they're committed to their goals. Right. And uh, we do see that in the data that we get, especially from the UCs, Mm -hmm. that our transfer students, um, their completion rates are on par, if not better than uh, students who start off um, as freshmen. Exactly. So our students are ready to go, and they, like I said, they thrive at the university. Yeah. Um, and what advice do you have for current community college students, maybe first year, second year, third years, whatever year they are, um, who want to potentially go to a UC or a Cal State or any of the other schools? Um, sure. I Again, I say dream big. Don't limit right. yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, many times students, uh, like I mentioned, don't think about those options, don't start exploring them. And it isn't until further in their, you know, educational journey with us that they start thinking about that. And now, of course, there's other requirements that they may need to meet because they hadn't thought about maybe applying to those universities. But really, um, I I really want students to think about all their options and not Mm -hmm. limit themselves. And once they define what their goals are, you know, what are their dream schools and maybe reach schools, I really like to call them, come in and get services to, to assist them. Uh, we can help them, um, you know, sort of like the GPS. You got to tell us where you want to go mm-hmm. and we'll help you get there. Yeah. Um, and just stay connected with all of the different programs, services, counseling, 
like I said, uh, don't try to go it alone. Mm-hmm. Um, our services are there to support students. Yeah, so how, how often do you advise students meet with counselors? We say once a semester at least. At least. At least once a semester just to update that educational plan, make sure requirements haven't changed. Mm -hmm. And students also change their minds. So maybe they change their mind for their major. Mm -hmm. um, And then that's going to require, you know, redrafting the educational plan. Mm -hmm. Or maybe, again, now they're considering, you know, UCs when they first made their ed plan. Maybe they were only thinking about Cal States. Mm -hmm. So... All of that kind of requires sort of like a checkup, you know, like you you want to just make sure that you're on track and uh, taking advantage of all the programs and services, career Mm -hmm. center services, because, um, you know, eventually students want to think about how their um, educational journey matches with their career goals. Mm -hmm. And so those two go hand in hand as well. Yeah, and, and let's talk a little bit about the programs and the organizations we have on campus that can not only embellish your application, but also just make you grow as a person, you know, getting that entire holistic education experience. That is really possible at Fulton College. So could you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, and you know, I, the you, you're, you hit the nail on the head because our yeah. research shows students who get involved in programs and mm-hmm. support programs and, and services, mm-hmm. those are the students that, Um, fare the best academically Mm -hmm. and you know with transfer success so we have many different programs that help build community for our students such as our Umoja program our EOPS program Mm -hmm. Puente um, many different programs and the promise even is sort of a, a community a learning community in and of itself so definitely the advice to to get involved I know it can be tempting sometimes for students if they're just commuting from campus and then going to work it might be a little bit difficult but whatever you can do to stay connected Mm -hmm. um, um, with our services and programs it's only going to help students any of newsletters and following these programs on instagram is probably the best first step that you can take to understand what services there are okay so my next question for you is what makes fulton college stand apart from other community colleges when it comes to transferring so i think all colleges you know have a commitment to transferring students Mm -hmm. but i think it's especially strong at fullerton college Mm -hmm. um there is like i said institutional commitment it's not just the staff in the transfer center we're a small staff yeah um but staff and faculty across the campus really care about students transferring Mm -hmm. and that's evidenced by um the fact that every year i ask students you know who who name um, a faculty or staff who has been instrumental in your transfer success. And um, every year we get nominations for staff and faculty across different departments, hundreds mm-hmm. of faculty and staff. So there's a community of people here who are cheering on our students mm-hmm. for their transfer. Um, I think we've also been very innovative when it comes to thinking of ways to support our transfer students Mm -hmm. um, throughout the transfer process. So it's not like just we do an application workshop and we hope you transferred and (laughs) did well. And um, we really try to create cohorts of students. And so we've created a four-part application workshop series Mm -hmm. that guides the students throughout that last year. Created that Canvas resource page by cohorts so that Mm -hmm. students get tailored information to their transfer cycle. Um, we've got, you know, planning guides. We've got yeah. video tutorials for the application. We're on mm-hmm. social media. We still do email because some students do still, you know, prefer the email newsletter. Yeah. Um, so we try to meet students where, they're, where they are with mm-hmm. the different types of communications and services that we provide. Um, our faculty also was very, um, uh, one of the... F- the um, community colleges that had the most ADTs developed when it first came out. Mm -hmm. Um, So we were at the forefront of of creating that pathway for our students for transfer. Mm -hmm. And we've also recently been uh, recognized uh, by the Campaign for College Opportunity for as being one of the colleges that stand out for um, enrolling our Black and Latinx students directly into 
transfer level English. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, an initiative that really is meant to um, shorten the time mm -hmm. uh, that students take to achieve transfer readiness. Right. So we're really proud of um, all of those things and, and that commitment that we have for for transfer for our students. Right, and you know, there's just so much that the Transfer Center and the entire community at uh, FC does for uh, our students who are trying to transfer to you know, these institutions. So just a quick question, what's an ADT for people who don't know? Okay, sure, yes, uh, the <laughs> ADT is an Associate's Degree for Transfer. Mm -hmm. So these degrees um, are different than our traditional AA degrees. Mm -hmm. um, and while they're not required to transfer, they can provide an advantage to students who are transferring mm -hmm. uh, in that it provides the, um, the courses required to transfer, mm -hmm. right? And they also include major prerequisites with okay. the idea that it will shorten the student's time to, degree, uh, to complete the bachelor's degree at the university. Got it. So the idea is that a student completes a degree in a specific major that aligns with a major at the university then the student is better prepared to move into the university and complete their degree with no more than 60 additional units. Right. But it also provides some ad admissions advantages in some cases to mm -hmm. students, so it's also helpful in that way. Um, students who are interested or curious should meet with their counselor mm -hmm. to find <laughs> out if the ADT is the right path for them. Right, because every case is... Yeah, you know, different. So individually, um, they'll get advised. Mm -hmm. um, and another question that I have is a lot of students want to know, can they double major? Can they add a minor already before transferring? So how, how do you advise people on that? So when students apply as a transfer, as a transfer student, you apply to one major. Mm -hmm. um, and you very rare, in very rare cases, can you apply as undeclared. So they really want transfer students to have honed in on a major mm -hmm. and prepared for that major. Um, once you get to the university, then you can uh, see about adding a, a second major or a minor, depending on what the rules are at the university. Mm -hmm. um, you may have to meet certain prerequisites for a second major before actually being accepted into it. Yeah. And if you do um, transfer with an associate's degree for transfer, let's say to a Cal State, um, and you decide to pick up a minor or a double major, then they can no longer guarantee that you'll graduate within 60 units, right? right? Because you're, you're volunteering to take on more coursework. Mm -hmm. um, but it is possible to do that as a transfer student once you're at the university. Mm -hmm. And just a last quick resource, uh, the Transfer Center has scholarships, right? Or scholarship guides? We have on our, so on our website, we mm -hmm. have tons of resources. Mm -hmm. So I really encourage students to go through all of our, you know, uh, web pages on our right. site. Uh, one of them uh, is, uh, has links to s different scholarships, mm -hmm. um, particularly scholarships that are affiliated with the universities. Got it. Um, and then also our general foundation um, scholarships. And one of the biggest scholarships um, that is really critical for our transfer students is the Jack Kent Cook mm -hmm. um, scholarship, which provides um, up to fifty thousand dollars per year right. uh, for students to complete their bachelor's degree. Mm -hmm. It's a national competition, uh, but we've been very successful in recent years in having um, scholars selected from Fullerton College for mm -hmm. that highly competitive um, scholarship. Right. So any other things you might want to add about advice or anything about our current graduates? Um, as far as advice um, for current students who are graduating, mm -hmm. um, just be confident. Right? Yeah. Uh, there's a little bit of um, hesitation sometimes on students' parts. Like There's many students who do get accepted, but they still think, am I going to be able to do well at the university? Mm -hmm. And the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. You know, there might be a little bit of a transition um, period just to get acclimated, um, but know that you're well prepared mm -hmm. to thrive and do well at the university and go for it. Right. Yeah. Alrighty. So I think uh, that brings us to the end of this interview. Thank you so much for explaining everything in such great detail. I think this will uh, be a great resource for current and potential students at uh, Fulton College. It was my pleasure. Thank you yeah. so much for having me. Thank you.